All right, why don't we call the order then at uh, 4.04. Uh, first order of business is minutes. Could I get a motion to approve the attached minutes from the August 21st, 2024 meeting? Motion. No motion. Oh, was that two people? Yes, I can't tell. <laughs> Did we get a I second? I think so. I don't, I didn't hear a second, but I can, I don't think I can. Oh, second. I'll second if. Oh, perfect. got the motion. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> I'll take whichever. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. Any discussion? All right. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Move right on to item C to discuss the FHS Building Committee newsletter. You want me to start, Kat? Um, yeah, I think we'll have Ira just kind of give us an overview of the newsletter. The goal would be to send it to the printer next week because in it we are advertising for that October 5th um, tour dates. So Ira, I'll, I know we, we breezed over it at our last meeting, but Ira was had some ideas for incorporating some of the ribbon cutting elements in it as well. All right, all right good afternoon, guys. Um, yeah, it was a wonderful event. Great turnout. Um, got two good stories from the, I don't know how, what kind of local coverage you got, but the current ran a kind of good article and uh, FSB did a nice short piece. Um, what we're looking, since it's a celebratory piece and all the other newsletters we do are more about information, getting more support. This is like a, a keeper of like, you know, what the event was like and currently what the photographs of the current spaces replacing the renderings. So there's, uh, I think there's four elements we're looking at uh, on doing this. How how should we cover the ribbon cutting? Uh, I suggested uh, to Kat, there were two right speeches. Uh, Meg, you get an A. Okay, um, because your brevity and to the point, <laughs> and which we, we appreciated. And we like to have the student. So in other words, if you have a digital copy, Meg, of your talk, and we want to put that in the newsletter. I covered everything in a short span of time, what people need to know. And if they ever want to go to the website, they can read more. But I think you covered the thank yous, what this was all about, a brief history. Okay. And so I thought it was, uh, you know, the one that, you know, um, at least in my opinion, the brevity was I appreciated and, uh, and hitting the right points. The other one was the student, which was just outstanding talk she gave. Uh, I'm, you know... <laughs> I don't, you know, I mean, that's, you know, I don't even know adults that can do what she did. Um, but I like to get a copy of her digital, uh, get a, a, a digital copy of hers um, and then include that. We have enough blank spaces. We're eliminating, uh, you know, we have the classrooms. Remember the poster? We're doing the posters again, and we're replacing the renderings with photographs. Um, and we're going to show a new site map. So we're actually showing the conclusion of this phase of the building and the building's opening, even though we know there's more on-site work, but I don't think it'll have the emotional impact of this. So in a sense, this is like a giving out to the whole community. If you didn't attend or you don't have kids in school, here's what happened. And so, um, and then have a link into the website with actual audio and, and some edited versions from the video. Uh, so I'm seeing those two testimonies, two talks, one Meg with you, one with the student, I think we'd have, I know we have enough space for yours. And uh, we're replacing sections that there's dated copy. You don't need to okay. have it. And uh, and with the big circular, if you remember it, if you remember the, the image of the poster, had a big kind of, I mean, I can pull it out, but, and those are all rendering. So now we're actually putting the photos in. Mm -hmm. I still have two more to do. I need the maker space and the auditorium. And uh, Kat told me we'd probably be able to photograph the auditorium next week. Maybe on a full sweep, but get that in. So it's, this is like a documentation of the what 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 it is on its purest form. Um, and then on the back where we have the address, we're going to be a spot with the invitation uh, right next to the address. So when people get it, the first thing they're going to see is their address, and right next to it's the invitation um, to go to the October event. And on that back page, I have plenty of photographs to replace the current ones that were there, which were more generic. So I took photographs of the you know, people there, sites, everything. 
and I'm going to ask uh, Russ if I can take a couple of uh, classroom shots, the kids in it. I don't have that. I like to include, include that. And so I'll, I'll do that next week. Um, so that's what I'm looking at this thing is that it's kind of a keepsake of the day itself. And, and on top, uh, you know, all the uh, state uh, stuff, uh, Beth, that came from, you know, what is a high school, uh, global student stuff, those six bulleted areas. Uh, I mentioned it to, to Kathy and she said, you know, said that didn't really change. So if you remember that, it was, you know, why do we do this? What's actually, why are we educating the kids and then become global and citizens? Um, and so that's how I'm looking at it. It's just taking this template, upgrading everything to new photos, some statements. And there's a little section of, um, oh, okay. Uh, we were yeah. pulling it up for you, Ira. Oh, uh, okay. Thank you. Um, and so the photos in the upper left and right, we're going to replace that. And if you, Devin, if you just scroll it down a little bit, uh, we're going to replace the center. Those are actually replacing those renderings of the actual photographs, which I took. And then the site map, which is all different. And there's a blank space there. That would be for you, Meg, yeah. your statement. And over on the left side there, we're eliminating project costs, tax implications. And we're going to put the uh, maybe abbreviated or some edited sections from the student talk because she was talking about the future. Um, or maybe on the right. We'll fill around how to do that, but I think I'll be able to get both talks in. And so that's, you know, those are blank spaces we can fill in. And everything around the circle will be all photographs. So this is all going to be, all the renderings are going to be replaced with photographs. Okay. Now, if you go to the back side, Devin. And so basically that tagline and the, and the, uh, the six kind of bulleted items, uh, those don't change because those are, you know, the purpose and meaning. All right. So on the back side, when this folds over, what people see is the address. And we'll have this nice red invitation. Of course, that's going to change on the date and everything. Um, so the, everyone will see that first before they open it all up. And then on the bottom, we're going to replace these photographs, too, with student shots, classrooms, stuff like that. In the, Ira, we talked about, too, the, this, just because this was from, like, 2021, the committee members, we have a list of all the updated ones, so yeah, that yeah, will all is, be updated. Yeah, this is all going to be upgraded. This is just, uh, um, I was fiddling around before replacing everything, so this was done before, actually, the, the ceremony. Um, and then I think what we do is have the link. If you want to see more about, you know, the ribbon cutting, so what I thought we do is have the ribbon cutting on either on this side or the other side. Uh, and I'd make a, a maybe at the bottom of this one, Devin, or put it at the top of the other one, the other page. So I have to replace kind of the photograph of everyone cutting the ribbon there. We, uh, down, you know, so that's the most important thing. Is that uh, uh, QR code still work to the site, Devin? I can test it out. Yeah. It does. Okay. Um, could we then direct it to the um, about the uh, uh, Wyvern cut, just a Wyvern cutting and have a, yeah. a, a new We can put page. a new one there and have it go straight to the ribbon cutting page. Yeah. And so this way of sharing everything with the community and tell people to go there. Um, and then they actually can see, you know, the video of the ribbon cutting and a couple of speeches. And then it's just a, a quick tour, you know. I, I mean, I've I've took around two hundred photographs, and I'm sure there's plenty others, but uh, I didn't do the videos inside. I have individual photos. So does this make sense to you, folks? How to go about this, uh, Meg? Yep, makes sense to me. Just, we're just updating everything, and it's that yep. poster approach. Here's what we, you know, it's a big celebration. You know, this is a great day. For the community and man, basically your talk was like that that's why i thought it made sense to put that in there okay um oh, hi kathy um can you flip it over on the other side hi uh, devin put it on the other side again 
bring it to the uh, the, the front side. Kathy, I just went through what we're going to be doing. With the, we're updating this whole thing with photographs. Uh, the only thing I want you to review, can you just scroll to the top again? If, uh, if this language still holds up in the, in the shot in the center, you know, preparing the students to, you know, for being uh, global citizens, can you review that? Do you want to upgrade any of this copy? Because it's the overall philosophy of what the high school represents or the education system in, Far in Farmington. Yeah, I will take a look. It just if you can more sooner or later, we got to get this out next week. Um, and then the, as we scroll it down, let Kathy see we're replacing all those circles. I might do squares of the actual photographs. We're getting rid of all the renderings because I have photographs of all this. Except I need two photographs of the makerspace and the auditorium. Uh, Kat told me we think we can photograph the auditorium. That it's not done, so maybe I can get an angle of it. And put that yeah, in. I think with the right angle, we can at least get the idea of what the cafeteria, you know, the auditorium looks like. It doesn't have to be totally complete. And then on the, um, so we're replacing uh, uh, on this, Kathy, as about the new high school, that we're using Meg's talk she gave at the groundbreaking, I mean, the ribbon cutting, which is kind of the overview and the thank yous and everything. And over on the left, where we're not talking about you know, the cost and all that. We're going to put the student's message in there. Uh, probably might have to edit it down a little bit, but she gave such a compelling talk. And then these things will be posted on the website. And so, well, I, you know, what we'll do is that I think what you guys should do, uh, uh, Meg and Kat and, uh, uh, um, and Kathy, pick the spots. We can't put an hour and a half video up on the website, but maybe pick out certain parts of the video. Like Wendy has the whole thing. Um, or if you want us to do it and pick what you think are pertinent, short little snippets, and then we'll edit and put it on the website. Um, I think it's just too long and raw and it eats up so much space uh, you know, to do it. Uh, we don't, you don't have to do it at this minute. It's just be a link. We want to put some of the video up and we do have video, um, of, of the you know the, of the sweep of the space, I have plenty of photographs showing all the people sitting in the stands and stuff like that. I'm sure Kathy, your photographers must have stuff too. So if you want to send some of it over, I I, I covered covered pretty much it uh, that day, uh, and I, I got there early and went around. To, you know, classrooms were empty, but you know I photographed them. And I'm going to ask, should I call Russ up to go and take some photos with the kids in the classes? Kathy? Uh, you know, we would just have to make sure they're allowed to be uh, photographed, you know, because there are many students that opt out of photographs. So, okay. you know, we have to look into that. No, I'm just thinking, you know, kind of back at their heads, looking at the teacher, kind of get around that or at a distance where they're not as identifiable. But I mean, it would be nice to have some actual, because that day I couldn't do any kids in the classroom. I have plenty of photographs of uh, hundreds of people there kind of going around, but I don't actually have kids uh, in there. So should I call Russ or I shouldn't bother even doing that? Yeah, I, I would, I can try, I'll try. Well, okay. <laughs> Ira, also with the, the hard deadline, I don't know if we're going to have the time. Yeah, right? If we want to get this to the printer next week. Yeah, well, it'll be the end of the week. I mean, I can I can send my photographer. I can come over and do quick photos. It's only you take, come in the morning when you have them. Because uh, they got the photo has got to be placed and scheduled in there. So it's going to take, a, you know, wait for the copy to come in. You guys got to approve all that. So I'm saying we're going to get this to the printer probably next Thursday or Friday, but it'll go out the following week, plenty of time prior to your open house in October. Um, it won't be a bother. It just needs approval to do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I still have to come over and photograph those two spaces anyway, Kat. Okay. Um, and the calendar's just being, you know, the uh, timeline stuff. 
that's going to be very short. And I might move that depending where I have the space to put these statements in. And we have a new site map. Um, I might have to, it, who did the site map? Where'd that come from, Kat? I sent you the updated one. That's from the plans, the updated site map. But if you need a, a different version, I can see what we yeah, can I, find. It, you know, all the footnotes and, you know, the, we just, I just want an outline of the site. Because if I put in all the, all the, you know, what's this and that, I just want to get it more general. Uh, yeah, I can ask the architect. Um, I don't know if they did a, an updated rendering, like, like we, you know, image like this that we had here, just because the updated site plan went to TPZ. So it needed to be that yeah, more specific yeah. plan, but I'll, I'll ask them if they have something. Or if there's an overview uh, taken above with the camera, is there a, a new one they did and the building opened? Uh, we had, Nelson, like a month ago, we had a drone. Nelson, is there a yeah. new drone shot? Are you have a new drone shot? I have one from mid-August. I'm having the drone guy come back on the 19th uh, to do the interior shots. We didn't take good shots at, with you all the good, movers you, in. You have a good but outside the outside, uh, I'll have to check what, what we have from mid-August. But it, yeah, won't, my... it won't show, like, the tennis courts that are, have yet to be built no. or the 1928, lay, you know, like, the true layout okay. of that. So it's not going to be... Okay. All as right, far Kat, as so what you have here, Kat, uh, the right at the center of the page, the architect yeah. does have a because it's showing a ball field. Yeah, I have an updated one. version. It's yeah. just it's straight from the plan, so it has like a key and, and more detailed information. Um, I'll no, ask but there is a, yeah, else. there is a color coded one like similar to this. Oh, you know what? I do have that. Yeah, oh, that's all okay. I need. Kat. That's all yeah, I need because okay. you don't. The last thing you want to put is it the one with the ball field. No, no, you're totally right. And yeah. and when you sent over, Kent, was an architectural one, working plan one. And so it just would take a lot of editing to clean up the site map. Yeah, I have. Yeah, it's like, this isn't great, but it's like this. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. Okay. I'll get is a real one, copy of this. Yeah, is it the one that's on the it. website? Yeah, the one we posted. The one on that's the on the website is the one from TPZ that i sent to ira okay i, I yeah. have something and I'll, I'll make sure it's yeah if we have more of a kind of a rendering simplified one of that cat yeah uh, no problem when you sent me was an architectural detail as a site map and i'd have to really clip and edit that and i don't think there's the time i'd have to get my photoshop folks to do i assume you must have one like kind of like this one that we yeah use. i have something okay just send it over um so you folks, you have any thoughts on how, how we're going about this piece? It's a, kind of a souvenir piece and every household get it. And, you know, here's what happened. And then the links to the uh, website, they want to see video. I mean, it's it's a, a kind of a celebratory piece. Something you'd like to hang up, Kathy, in your room. <laughs> Both sides. <laughs> So you can always flip it over. We'll talk about this today and tomorrow we'll talk about that. <laughs> nope, I so is it. everyone uh, kind of, I know, Kat, you wanted everyone to kind of agree to the way we're doing this? Yeah, just kind of make sure everybody's on the same page with it. Obviously, we'll, we'll review the actual content and make sure that it's, you know, still applicable um, and then and then get it to the printer. But I just wanted the committee to weigh in on the, the layout and the ideas behind the content. I mean, I looked at the description of all the ones we have currently circled ones. They seem to hold up, Kathy. Uh, and, and if you want to review them all, but I mean, I'm looking at what they're described and it's pretty much what you got. Um, but if you think we need to change some of the description to those photos, because all those ones are renderings are being replaced by photos. Yeah, I, I think Kim, uh, our assistant superintendent, can help with the descriptions to make sure they're accurate and reflect, um, you know, what we intended. You know what I'll do, Kathy? I'll send over the photos that represent the changes. Okay. Uh, and uh, I'll send that out to you uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, yeah. And there's a couple I don't have because I got to photograph them. But I use this as kind of like... Uh, my checklist when I went around and photographed the classrooms. Okay, thank you. And we might make them this time more rectangular so get, we get a little more of the photo in. 
but I'll let, I'm, I'm going to work with my designer on that. Um, you know, it's just, you know, it's just five years of work. Here it is, guys. <laughs> I think it makes sense, Ira. How, you know, Kathy, how many people, or Kat, or, or Meg, how many you estimate were actually there? Was there anyone doing a count? I mean, um, what I've been saying is like 1,500 to 2,000, I would guess. Yeah, that was my guess. You, you had the gymnasium fits about 1,300 people, and you had about three or 400 people standing in the back. So you, you were close to 2,000. Probably 1,800, 1,900 people. The only thing, Meg, I would add on your talk is maybe include that. Okay. That 2,000. Yeah. From, close, to, close to 2,000 people. From babies crying to seniors. <laughs> we heard a couple of kids kind of crying in the background. They brought their babies. So get to see what the new high school's like when they start going 18 years from now or 15 years from now. Um, yeah, there was a uh... Was yeah. well attended, and there were yeah, people we, actually that just came into the cafeteria and didn't spend too much time in the gymnasium. So mm -hmm. there were definitely yeah. people coming and going. Well, the food and drink was gone in three seconds. Um, so, but you know they stayed. I very few people left, um, and they stayed through it all. Given the amount of speakers we had, everyone had a little different flair to it. And, you know, Kathy, you kind of let it in pretty good with everybody. Um, but to me, it was the students' talk was just <laughs> outstanding. I mean, I've been in many of these and like, where did she come from? <laughs> I don't mean it in a negative way. It was just so so mature and you know, just she wrote that, I assume, all by herself. Did, she, did anyone look at it beforehand? Yes. Oh, you did. Mm -hmm. OK. But Jeff, she she, along with so many of our, all of our students are just extraordinary. We're no, so I, fortunate and for them to have this beautiful facility that now matches the education that we provide. It's oh, yeah. amazing. Yeah, she kind of summed it up really nice in terms of, you know, even though she's going to be a senior there, but kind of integrated all that feeling. Yeah. I, you know, it was um, you know, a great event, great, great turnout. Um, People were parking. I don't even know if there was enough parking space. I went out. <laughs> the place was absolutely packed. Yeah, we shut. We had to shuttle people to a nearby location. Oh, really? Yeah, we awesome. used our dial ride van, and we had people parked down the street, and we uh, we ran a few loops back and forth. Wow, well, that's something to be said. People selling out at the oh. high school. Okay. <laughs> All righty. So uh, I'll go ahead with that and. Kathy, if you can just, you know, uh, you know, let me know who you want me to work with. I'll get some photos over to you tomorrow. Uh, just take a look and see if there's any description changes you need to, uh, need to do. And uh, also the intro. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you. And Megan, if you yeah. want to alter around your talk, I just maybe yeah. a sense or two would be fine. Yeah, I'll make some adjustments to it. So it's it's more appropriate, like just a few things. I'll make some. It's like it was really great to see almost two thousand people in the community come out. That uh, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, all right. Um, all right. So next order business to discuss the October FHS open house. Um, yes. So jumping in on this one, that's gonna be here very very quickly. <laughs> um, so we should probably start thinking about how we want to lay that out. Um, I know in our initial conversation months ago, we talked about signups potentially for a tour. Um, so people know, you know, we're not getting an influx of a bunch of people at once. You could sign up for a time slot. Um, and then that may help with getting people through the building and, and, and making it easier on everybody. So if that's what we want to do, um, we would need to include that information in the newsletter and get probably like a sign up genius or a Google form, you know, something that we can create and, um, and have people sign up. So is this one cat, uh, cat where people have to sign up in order to take a tour? Or otherwise, they yeah, so we were we were trying to organize it in a way because, you know, initially this was going to be the 
main way people could view the building. And then we, we morphed it into having the separate open house and ribbon cutting. Mm -hmm. um, but there were concerns about like, you know, it's a Saturday in October and there's soccer and, you know, other sports going on to have a designated time would probably help people work it into their schedule and not feel like they're missing out or, you know, it, it kind of works with people and, and what they have going on that day. I guess the question is if we want to do that, are we doing tours on the hour? What's our capacity per tour group? Um, and then who would be leading the tours? Would it be student council like we've done in the past? Or would it be building committee? Like who who would actually be leading these tours? So I think these are some details that we need to, to figure out. So thoughts. Um, before we jump into that, is this still same um, footprint? Or is this the expanded? I think this area? one would be more. Um, okay. I would think, you know, the library is something we want to show. I think, um, you know, we people didn't get to see the auto class and the a lot of like the art and STEM and all of those great classes on the other wing. I mean, I do. I think we need to go up and down every okay. classroom pod. No, but I think the idea for this one was a bigger footprint. Okay. Um, than that than that open house and, and I think it should be led you know like a guided tour I don't think it should be yeah. a self-led tour I agree so you put in other words you do it in groups but if you do it that way and you can take 30 people at a time maybe that'd be the most or 25 and that yeah that so then maybe we offer it on the on the half hour or you know like if so that many people um we did buy in 2019 those little headsets yep. that we had um when we were doing the tours of the old facility to show why a new one was needed um and the deficiencies with the old one but i we could probably find those i think those would be helpful for projecting um the tours and, and obviously working with with russ and and kathy um and in your administrative team to see what the best route would be um Maybe we can offer more than one tour and one starts on this side, you know, in pod B, all the other ones in pod A, you know, and, and maybe find different routes. But um, I just, looking at the calendar, it's going to be here really, really quick. Yeah. I mean, if there's a time, we've done this before, where you, you set up an audio tour on your phone, and you plug into it, and there's, a, you know, if you go down the hall, a quick map and it, it, as they go to that place there, they just click on that number and they get, here's this classroom in a minute. But that would have to be done almost immediately. Completely, if you're doing a kind of a self tour where people can walk around and see what's going on versus managed. That's why I'm asking because if we don't, if you're going to schedule people to walk every 15 minutes, a certain amount of people, won't they then have to sign up for a particular time period? Yes. Yep online yeah and i mean i think if the um ribbon cutting proves anything it's that we're we can get the word out for events like this so i think including it in the newsletter and using the same avenues that we did last time um would get the word out to to sign up um it, it's just you know the the logistics behind how frequently what size do we want um you know, where, and then obviously the lat we can figure out the route, but it's really for the more immediate future is, are we having people sign up ahead of time? Or do we have people si sign up for, an, do we allow walk-ins? Like what's kind of, what's our, our game plan for that? I, my guess is you're going to get 50, 50, you're going to 50% people, you know, are going to sign up another 50% are going to show up because they're yeah. just, they're going to see the, the media, all the notes going out, I mean, the media coverage or the announcements and knowing how people are today, they're just, you know, I'll show up. They're not going to throw me out. But mm -hmm. then you got to say, who do we put them in with? And what if there's an overwhelming amount? Uh, my sense is some of the people who actually were there that day, they're probably going to come back mm -hmm. a certain number of them anyway. Um, I, I think we control this as much as possible. That's yeah, why I agree with you. Um, I think... It, so I think we schedule times. I think we exit them 
out. I'm just am very nervous. Like we're going to have, for your sake, Kathy, I'm sure your, your staff feel the same way. We just don't need people roaming around. Like you're coming in, you're following this route. We have people with you. And then we're, we're actually exiting you out of the, oh, yeah. the facility agree, as Maggie. well, because I think it's going to be too overwhelming otherwise. If the ribbon kind of means any indication of the level of interest, which is wonderful. Yes. Um, I just, I would, I would think, uh, you know, Kathy, certainly your, your staff would be the best judges of this, but that we would want to keep this as tight as possible for them. Yeah, I think the Farmington Police Department would appreciate that. Yeah. You know, when they've had concerns about having people wandering in the school the night before school started and, you know, not that, you know, we're suspicious or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It's just that things happen as we know today a tragedy mm -hmm. happened in a school and we have we have to take it seriously so yeah. uh i don't think it should be uh something that isn't guided uh and that you bring people around and you have a route and you stick to it yep and if you show up we will schedule you in the next available option mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't, and I think it's, I just, just think we have to be very strict about it. I mean, maybe that won't be received great, but I, I think this has to be very, very controlled. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I don't know if we need to go through the level of detail when you have, you know, the year 20 people that have signed up and do we have them check in? I mean, does that help in terms of security also? Yes. And then yeah, I would say, I would, yeah. And I would say maybe Russ might have the best idea of what is a manageable group. Maybe he might have some ideas already. Oh, this would make sense to tour it this way, just because he's in the building every day or someone else. And once we figure out how long that would take, that's going to guide your time slots. Yeah. But, you know, if we think we could take 30 people around at a time or 20, I would leave by, I don't know, a certain percentage open for people to come in so that if they're coming in at two, the next available spot isn't four o'clock. That's not, it's, it's not going to go well. It might be fair, but it's just not going to go over very well if we can't accommodate some walk-ins. Well, and if we add them to the list and they have to, you know, so their name is on that list for whatever group they get into. I don't know. Just well, maybe we, room. yeah, maybe we si ha limit it to 20 signups, but we know the group can be 25. So we are yeah. saving a few spots for walk-ins. Right. And yeah, if we can accommodate it, we do, but we're not also overwhelming the. Right the group size. Yeah. I wouldn't have the online signups be for the max or yeah. ideal number of Yeah. People. And I do, I think we do have to say like at yeah. some point that's it. You know, right. I, I do, I know everyone wants to see it and I'm thrilled over that, but I do think having that many people even <laughs> at the ribbon cutting was a lot. It was a um, lot. It was a lot. And yeah. so at some point you have to say like our, our tours are full. We don't have yeah. any more room. Yep. Yeah. Right. Maybe some, another thought on you guys think about is that I think we should put a little bit more information saying oh, you need to sign up for security and planning purposes. Be very specific. I, I, I think that's absolutely yeah. the case yeah. here. And so we, I think as part of the invitation, Kat, that, yeah. you know, that, you know, unless you, you couldn't make it that minute, we you need to sign up. We need to have your name because this is a public school. And even though we want you to see it, mm -hmm. we're concerned about, you know, the, the security uh, and also a, a, a about managing amounts of people come. So pick your time slot and when it fills up, it then goes to another one like that. Yeah. We'll just and say signups are required. Yeah. You know, so therefore, it and says only... to people sign up or don't show up in, many, in a nice way. Yeah. <laughs> and uh so this is it's different because I agree with the open house as great as it was. On hindsight, you probably could have just not give the tour because everyone was in the cafeteria anyway. And just, you know, they could have at the end of that left and then sign up for the tour. But, you know, it, it, it is what it is. And we learn from these things. And it's obviously people were excited and they were talking and taking photos and, and stuff like that. But whoever expected almost 2,000 people to show up. So, yeah, I mean, which was, as soon as which people was great, got, but, yeah. I just think as soon as people got in the building, they were they were going to try to get as much as they could. I know. Uh, <laughs> but it was great. It was, I mean, who could have predicted that many people? And I, I think it worked out great. Yeah. yeah. 
And so what's our time slot for when to when are we talking on Saturday? I, I didn't look at my notes, Kat. I, I know we had talked about it being a pretty, I, I mean, you want to, you want to be able to do afternoon slots for those that have activities in the morning, but there's all, you know, so I, I don't know. I don't I mean, want to say do nine something... to five because that's a really long time slot. I know. What, I mean, what if we do like 10 to two, break it into 15 minute slots. And if you say, then put, just put 20 to 30 in there. And then pick what you know. Pick what it's going to be. So you're, you're giving very specific times. These are the hours. So if people are free up in the morning. They can go. And if it's in the afternoon, and so you take those. So you got four times eight. Uh, four times. Uh, um, four times four. You got you know uh, sixteen slots for people to take tours. You figure we get twenty thirty people. You know that's you know getting up in the numbers. Um, I'll just, I, I don't know how you I, feel I about do that. also want to remind everyone we're hosting 80 educators like a week later mm -hmm. um, for a convening here for several days at FHS from all over North America. So I just do worry a little bit about Russ ha handling <laughs> all of this all at once. I, you know, I just have, I don't want to be a naysayer. I'm just saying we've, it's it's uh, a lot. So any ways we can simplify it, I think Russ and I will be very happy about that. <laughs> Just because, you know, we're asking students to come in and do these things and they're more than happy. But the frequency, because, you know, we, uh, you know, had committed to this convening, which is really exciting for us as educators to host uh, a group of 80 people who are learning from us and uh, whether we had a new building or not, you know, they um, are coming to learn from us, but it is a lot of extra responsibility on the part of Russ. And, you know, I just want to acknowledge that. With so, everyone. Kathy, given what we just talked about, what would then be your suggestion? I um, think. Can we um, cut down the hours? I think maybe cutting down the hours would be helpful. And if maybe we do another open house at another time, I don't know. I, I just feel like, especially this crunch at the beginning of the year has been a lot for us and we're doing it. But I also just want to make sure that our teaching and learning is our major focus for the educators and leaders. And I do feel like I have to create that buffer zone around them um, because, you know, we've had, you know, a wonderful start to the school year in our classrooms and schools. We've had some challenges <laughs> in other ways. And uh, then, you know, knowing we have to host in a week later, you know, several days of educators at the high school and our teachers are doing a PLX, which is putting on a conference. Uh, so it's, me, it's a lot, it's a lot. And I don't, you know, it's, I just have to say it because I want to respect my faculty staff and my administrators with all they have going on too. And our well, students. So. Well, Kathy, I'll give me a radical idea. Given the amount of people who came to the opening, do we have to, how much publicity have we done, Kat, on this? Uh, we haven't done much, but this date has floated around I for... Mean, then Sometime. why don't we just why don't we just cancel it and do it some other time? Because if we break this into a two hour slot and you've given 20, 30 people, you're leaving this to two to three hundred people. And then it's like you're then you're shutting people off who want to see it because there's not enough open slots. Uh, you, you know, have a, unless you have, you have, an open, you have you a parent have, like an open house for parents, isn't there a isn't that's, this around that's the same also time? happening yeah. during this time too? Yeah. Right. That's, so that's it's, the week before. So the October, <laughs> if it hasn't been advertised much, could be okay, it's the parent open house, and then we'll do a, a community open house later in the year or early springtime. Or later yeah, fall, I, yeah. or later fall time. Um, or later fall time before the you know the auditorium uh um I the plays and all that start, uh, Russ, what time is it like early December that you start having like the winter yes. concerts and, and performances? So more community members will see that, that 
even grandparents that don't necessarily have their kids in in the school system, but they'll be able to see those spaces. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just throwing it out. I mean, uh, really Russ, later, is there, later in the year. Yeah. Is there a better time than beginning of October, given what you're dealing with? You know, because we do have our own activities going on. I don't know if there's a lull between seasons or, you know, like sports season. I don't know if there's more of a time that makes sense. Um, and maybe give a little reprieve before we do another open house. Yeah, no, I appreciate that conversation around it and the understanding that um, everyone has about, you know, what's going on here. Um, you know, in terms of, I mean, this place is always busy. Um, and, you know, in terms of athletics, there is a lull, um, but we're also going to be redoing the gym floor, I think, in that lull. Um, so the uh, gym. Yeah, November, between you know, November 16th and the. Uh, the December 1st. Um, so like, yeah, so I mean, I mean, that would be off. Like if we waited until that point, that would not be, um, which I think is a pretty high spot on the tour. Like it's a, yeah. it's such a beautiful space that people, you know, will want to be able to, to go through there. Um, you know, I do think that if, I do think that in terms of logistically, if we waited a little bit longer then maybe fewer people would do it. And I'm not saying that to deter people, but Oh, we have open house for families. We're going to have the biggest turnout we've ever had on mm -hmm. September 26th. Um, we have our first volleyball game here tonight. I know my parents are coming to the volleyball game for some reason. Like people are coming <laughs> to the volleyball game. Everyone wants to go into the We're going to have the biggest. At a peak. We're going to have the biggest. Grandparents, crowd. aunts, uncles. Oh, so I you know what I mean? So like. Colleague, superintendent wants to go. You know, if we did wait until like right before that floor was done at like the beginning of November, we may get, I mean, I'll do it whenever, you know, we, we just, we make things happen. Right. So, um, you know, if we decide we're doing it the fifth then we do it the fifth, but it, it, but we may get more people in and feeling like I've been in the school, I've been to games, I went to open house and this stuff that they feel like they already know it and they may not need to come back for like a guided tour. So, um, you know, that's just one way of thinking at it. And what about the it. 9th of November? Like, I think that would be fine. I would have to check our like athletic schedule and stuff, but yeah. Yeah. Well, Kathy, I, I when you go back and look at, they're all going to be getting this newsletter in their house. They can go to the website and see, you know, the dedication. We are talking, there's going to be so many events going on and people are interested, it'll be there anyway. And so, you know, in hindsight, it's like, it made sense when we thought about it, Kat, but given that, you know, there's going to be so much stuff going on already because it's fall time, just maybe in the springtime sometime and saying, here's a second round, but there people are going to be able to see the photographs. They can go to the website, look at the video and, I mean, we're really what we're talking about is going in a couple of classrooms. I'm seeing, which are great to look at. There's no doubt about it. But we're going to have all these images available on the website and on the on the mailer. Um, and it doesn't mean you don't want community engagement, but uh, already done it. Yeah, no, <laughs> I got, definitely. You've you got so much stuff we're already doing to send out between the newsletter, the event itself, the videos are going to be on the website. You can tell people here, go see this. Um, you know, you guys are making sense and what you're, Russ and Kathy, you're talking about, it's not like this is, is it absolutely necessary to do right now or at all? I mean, Never. I do think the spring is too late. Yeah. On the sign up that we did have for the ribbon cutting, we said we would be having an event this fall. Okay. We didn't have this specific date, but I don't want to, I, I think it's too long. Yeah. to wait till the I, spring yeah as and much I, as i don't want to try to push it and i know we're coming up against holidays and um it's always busy and you know but to give some reprieve if it helps give some reprieve i just think people were anticipating oh i just know people who are active in the community they were still on vacation or they right. couldn't come to the ribbon cutting and they kind of knew well i'll just go to the other one I don't think it's yeah. a big deal to change that date, but I agree that pushing it into a new, a different season might be. Yeah. Yeah. November 9th is homecoming. So that's going to be a wild weekend here. So I don't, I don't know that I would make it on that one, but. Um, okay. How about November 16th? That looks like a good date, right? 
It's the Sorry. fall play. Well, oh. I mean, it's it's um if it's in the morning, you know, it's not a bad. It's not like bad for them to see a set yeah. set up for the play. I think yeah. that shows that it's being utilized. Um, but I do see that on the calendar, Russ. I just yes. don't know about winter. Like there could, again, there there could be basketball game, but it would be at night. It wouldn't be in the morning. Right. Well, basketball, so basketball, that would be the in-between season that we were talking about. So, oh, yes. So um, anything, yeah. anyone that's still playing from the fall would be deep into the state tournament, and we probably wouldn't be hosting anyways by that point. It would, that's like state tournament weekends. Um, so we wouldn't be host state championship weekends. So I don't think that we'd be hosting anyways. I can, I've, I'm going to go see Matt right after this meeting, so I could double check there. Basketball doesn't start until the 1st. Um, so I think that right after that, they would be, what was the date for the floor? Um, I think it's the 16th, Nelson? right? Was it we, that day? We slotted, we slotted 11, 16 to 11, 30. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that was, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to start on that Saturday, but most likely they just so that they have plenty of time. They probably would start that Saturday. They need two weeks basically where no one. No one gets on that floor, which would be 10, 10 working days. So I could get back to the team. What about the second? Here. Pardon me? I just said, what about the second for um, December? No, of um, November. Well, we yeah, have no. that Friday off. I just don't know if families make plans or whatever. Don't we have that Friday off? Yes, we Is do. There a holiday on the second. Diwali. Diwali. I just, you know, just because then you might not get as many students who could help out. Yeah, yeah true. Give, give you guys another radical idea here. Make it a Zoom meeting, and we walk around with a camera, and you mm -hmm. can go around, and anyone can watch it online, and so they get to see it because it sounds like the school is so busy. And tying you up. I'm trying to find a way for you. I know politically and culturally people want to see it, but people are used to tours online doing Zoom. I don't know if any of you've done it. Some are really great. And you can do it beforehand. You can do it on that, that way. You walk around the camera. It's as simple as almost an iPhone, but it has to be a little more sophisticated where you just say, welcome, here it is. We're going to walk you around and do it that way uh, versus not worrying to do on site, but get to them to see the building. Again, it's just another option. It's not that is not complicated to do. It's planning, but it's not overwhelming on site act on site planning and to do I, it. So I, I anyway. think we have to I think we have to get people in the building. Okay. I think um and I know I, I'm I'm the first one to be sympathetic, but we're also in a situation where we've at went out to the community twice for money for this like we've had support all along the way so okay. whatever we can do to make this happen for them and if we could do it in october i think it would be great i know again i don't want to push you guys but if, october if there's 26th. A way, and just and, and i'm all for shortening the window mm. like it does not need to be an all-day thing i don't think it's mm. like look this is what we have available and then if we have huge demand let's think about okay maybe we offer something at a much later time or you know, maybe that's when we can push into another season or maybe even later in the in the fall, depending on what we see. If we see huge, you know, we might not see it. We don't know. But I think if we say, OK, there's a three hour, can we carve out a three hour window at some point that we can get get more people in the building if they if they missed it the first time around? I, and we could do a video that's yeah. at some point is out there. Yeah. On the yeah. Website. yeah. I do think I mean, what about the 26th? Only yeah. because it'll give us a week away from having just hosted for a full week. Yeah. It gives and, us and there's a lot of, here. there's just so much prep we have yeah. to do. So I feel like afterwards it'll be like, okay, that's done. It'll feel better. And after maybe the, the 26th fact. is a better day and it's in October still. Yep. You know, yep. And I would still limit it October the October 26th limited and then see if there's the participation yeah. is so overwhelming exactly. you could have another three hour but you're, you're not you know taking 700 people through the building in, in one day yeah. great and and I do think Russ does have a point as we have athletic events 
you know, more and more people are going to be able to see it just by exactly. attending those events. And yeah. so by the 26th, you'll have a lot of people that have seen it, whether it's through the parent open house or athletic events. And then those who really haven't seen it and want to, you know, that gives them that opportunity on the 26th. Do we know if there are programs going on with younger children like um, Lego League or uh, that just comes to mind um, that, you know, to kind of get those that will organically get those people in the building prior to and just. Yeah, we actually have. That's a great call too, Beth, because we do have actually exactly that Lego League and continuing ed will also be in the building between now and then. So um, so those are other opportunities hopefully they'll feel like a good chunk of the community has been in to see it yeah i really appreciate everyone being so responsive <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, and and i yeah i think it's you know we certainly don't want to you know push where you know unnecessarily Absolutely for you guys. I just think for this one, we got to get at least one oh, more I, under our belt, definitely. and then we yeah. have a, we have a little definitely. bit of a leeway after that. Yeah, absolutely. But I think I just know all that Russ is dealing with. I know, I and, know. And like any ways we can be a little flexible, I I appreciate it very much. So thank you. And Russ, we can. I mean, it's your call, obviously, the best way to. But you have a whole group of people. Um, beyond students if you need us. So like yeah. we have full building committee members, we can do tour, like you're depending on where yeah. where you need um, people and what's the best use of us from a volunteer perspective. I mean, we're gonna be there anyways. So use us accordingly mm-hmm. and yeah, we're more than happy to do that. Thank you. I, and I, I think it's extra special to get a tour from, you know, a couple students. And, yeah, you know, exactly. we do have a couple of groups here that, you know, National Honor Society, purely, we have multiple yep. groups that are geared into doing stuff like this. They are due volunteer hours and yep. when opportunities come up, they jump all over it. So we would get some great kids, um, um, you know, so I think just like doing like, you know, things go well when they're planned well. This group has obviously a good track record with that, with the building and awesome opening, um, you know, uh, ribbon cutting and stuff. So I think if we plan it well and we set the kids up to be successful, then that would be the best. Um, that would be the best use of all of our time. Okay. What about support and planning, Russ? You feel like you got that too, or like, is there something that on the town side or building committee we can um, support I mean, that, that way? You know, I don't like if uh, I didn't know if it would like I don't know if it's the same process that went we went through for you know, the other ceremonies that we've done, um, you know, obviously, uh, you know, uh, the communication um, would be one aspect of this, the signups and collecting those signups um, would be uh, another important step for this. Uh, I think in terms of, you know, what does that look like? Uh, You know, at one point, I know, I'm sorry that I missed the very beginning of this meeting, but at one point, um, one of the discussions was that people would go to the auditorium first and get a short presentation about like the, like how we got here. Mm-hmm. And then maybe uh, that group would go off into the building and you could bring another group in. So I think if we were to do something like that, um, you know, maybe working together on on the presentation and, and I'm sure uh, people would love to hear from some people in the building committee about the process and stuff like that. And then, you know, like I said, then maybe kids go from there and we can have adults around the building, um, you know, talking about some different spaces. So um, it gives I us like that too. Little, like yeah. a little more time to do those things, which I yeah. think is it's nice. I know Kim did our assistant superintendent did the most incredible uh, presentation. I think she's present she's going to present to the building committee and to the Board of Ed on learning spaces and learning environment and the why behind how we designed that school. And it was amazing. And I think I said, I told you she's been certified in learning environments and now working with you know, schools and architects um, once she retires as a consultant. And um, you know, I, I think that was a very powerful presentation and very informative about your brain 
and the learning environment and how your brain reacts to certain spaces. It was kind of the science behind why you uh, create or design spaces in certain ways. And we have all those design features. And, you know, it's something to me, it was a real point of pride when I listened to kind of the why and really giving people like there, there's a science behind all of this and how people react to those spaces and their own well being so that they're, they're present and ready for learning. Yeah. That was really I, good. That's a I great like point because that. that would be more important, I think, even than the, like the, the history in the background. Cause I exactly. think people already know yeah. that now, but mm -hmm. like maybe a quick trip through the phases where yeah. we came from, where we are, and then, you know, spending a lot of time, you know, with that, and we that means we have to do it before Kim uh, retires too. Yes, so <laughs> there we go. That gives us a, a strong timeline. Yes. Okay, Kat, what else do you need from us? I think, um, kind of like for the ribbon cutting, Ross. Maybe we can get together and and work on some of the logistics just so yeah, we can. We got this down. We, we yeah, we, we have a system now. <laughs> Um, just, and then we'll come back to the committee in, at our next meeting in a few weeks. And, you know, I at least kind of have the game plan a little bit more fleshed out so we we'll can get our checklists forward. ready to go. Yeah, we have yeah. a, we have a template, we have checklists, we're good to go. <laughs> and, and Russ, we promise as a building committee, we will go away eventually. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Listen, this is great people. And it's always another year. Time, so. <laughs> I know. I know it might seem like life will not go on without us, but it will. We will. We will. We will stop good. at some point. <laughs> Do you have offices for us over there, Russ? We can yeah, all come on up there. anytime. We have lots of space. <laughs> Those new digs are looking pretty good behind you, well, though. Right? Yeah, you can tell I'm trying wow, to get beautiful. used to the like. I'm. I'm actually blind right now. Every time I look at my left, <laughs> I have That's not daylight. Touched my shades yet, so yeah, no. the shade the shades will be going up very, very soon. <laughs> well, they're right up. In. I just haven't. The shades are up. Oh, so you're not using them. Oh, yeah, you're not using them. All like, right. Any... Every time I'm on my like, if I'm on a call or I'm on my phone and the window's open and, and like a dismissal or kids just come and knock on them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, you you do great. have an operable window there that you can use. Yeah, do the best. It's awesome. Love it. All right. Anything else for the immediate? Like, I think that's enough, right? Had to get started at least for planning. Yeah. yeah and well, I think well, we're going to be sending out the um, invitation with the newsletter in the next week or so. So I think it'll just be we're, we're going with the 26th of October. And, you know, we'll make sure that we have this at least the sign up situation. Um, worked out for people to sign up because if we're if we're sending out the invitation we should have that figured out okay right cat we'll connect tomorrow at some point yeah perfect all right sounds good all right anything else that was a full meeting today yes <laughs> oh, wow 502 all right uh can i get a motion to adjourn please motion i'm gonna second yeah, I think Wendy dropped off. I'll second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. We'll adjourn at 503.